Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be sharing our lesson with you today for May the 30th, 2021. This is Lesson 13 and we're still in Unit 3 entitled Courageous Prophets of Change. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Changing for the Better. Our devotional reading is taken from Jonah chapter 2. Our background scripture is taken from Jonah chapter 3. And we'll be studying today from Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. Our key verse reads, When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. That's taken from uh, Jonah chapter 3 verse 10 uh, from the uh, NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to survey Nineveh's response to Jonah's message. Secondly, to sense how the people of Nineveh felt after hearing Jonah's message. And then thirdly, to engage in repentance and right behavior after hearing God's warning. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Another Chance, Obedience. Second outline is entitled, Wholesale Repentance. And then our third outline is entitled, Wholesale Forgiveness. And so as always, we are humbled and thankful to God for the many benefits that he has bestowed upon us and all of the grace and the mercy that we have received. And we're certainly thankful that we're able to share this lesson with you today, one that is very critical uh, as we seek to understand God and uh, his purposes uh, for our lives. We pray that you will get your Bible and uh, be prepared to take some notes. Uh, that we want to share with you from this lesson. I want to read some of the biblical context for this account and then we'll get uh, right to our outlines. But uh, Jonah prophesied during the prosperous reign of Jeroboam the second of Israel. The military weaknesses of both Syria and Assyria had allowed Jeroboam to enlarge Israel's northern borders to where they had been during the reigns of, of David and Solomon. Spiritually, Israel was characterized by religious insincerity, poverty, and injustice. Jonah was not called to address these sins of Israel, but to an evangelistic mission to Nineveh, uh, an Assyrian uh, city God had chosen for destruction because of the sins of the people. In Jonah, we see a rebellious prophet running from God's will. Jonah learned that God cares for the people we tend to hate, overlook, or deem unworthy of his grace and mercy. God is able to accomplish his eternal purposes on the earth, even when those he chooses to use are reluctant and unwilling. So the clear message of the book of Jonah is God's incredible love for the world, for, for the world, uh, his desire for all people to turn from their sin, and his readiness to forgive all who genuinely do so. And so we want to remember, uh, keep in mind, uh, as we think about the prophet Jonah, and I'm quite sure that uh, most of us, many of us have, have read this account uh, and we understand that uh, Jonah did something that uh, no other prophet in the Old Testament uh, did. Uh, most of the prophets are those that um, consented, they even consented to speak for God uh, even when they uh, would rather not. I want you to look at Exodus chapter 4 verses 10 through 12 and also Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 6 through uh, 9. But Jonah chose not only to keep his mouth closed but also to try to run away from God. Uh, and so as we think about this lesson today, uh, particularly as we get to the first outline, uh, God is reaching out to uh, an entire city 
uh, God has decided uh, uh, based on his evaluation or his indictment of this city of Nineveh that uh, he is going to uh, overthrow it or he is going to destroy it but we want to make sure that we understand the analysis of how uh, people are saved and I, I want to before we get into this fir first outline I want to read Romans um, uh, chapter 10 very familiar passage to us but I want to highlight some things as we think about uh, Jonah's uh, unwillingness to do uh, what God has called him to do. And I, you know, I, I don't want to uh, uh, come down so hard, if you will, on uh, the prophet Jonah, because uh, if the truth be told, all of us have, uh, and certainly I have, uh, uh, when I think about it, uh, I haven't moved every time that the Lord has told me to move. I haven't done everything even by omission uh, of uh, uh, the things that God have given me to do. Uh, I have assigned to my hands. And this is something that we all face. Uh, when we think about, uh, I believe that Jonah uh, was comfortable where he was. And I believe that uh, Jonah did not want to be made uncomfortable. He did not want to travel to Nineveh. He did not want to do uh, what God had given him to do. And I, I find this to be the issue uh, many times as we think about things that we don't do that God requires of us to do is that we don't want to break that comfort zone. But Romans chapter 10 I want you to look at verse 14 and 15. These are some very important questions when we think about what God has called Jonah to do and the fact that Jonah, uh, uh, at least initially, he did not want to do it. Verse 14, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and who bring glad tidings of good things. Why are these questions important? Uh, when we think about the process of individuals being saved, uh, it starts with a message. It starts with uh, a, a commission. It starts with a calling of God upon an individual and commissioning that individual to speak on his behalf or to, uh, uh, to travel, if you will, as in the case of Jonah. Uh, but if individuals are not hearing the gospel, then they are least likely to know who to call upon in terms of being saved. And so uh, as we think about these questions here, if God is going to destroy this city, the just thing, the equitable thing in terms of how God is looking at the situation is to give these opportunities uh, uh, for change, to present the message to Nineveh through Jonah and give these individuals an opportunity to change their ways before he acts. And so the fact that Jonah does not want to do this uh, frustrates the will of God, frustrates the plan of God. Uh, and so uh, it's very important that all of us take heed to this lesson and how important it is uh, that since Jonah is a carrier of God's word, a messenger, he also has Nineveh's blessings. Uh, what do I mean by that? He is the 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 uh, the key, if you will, to them being saved. Their salvation is a blessing. It's an act of a blessing, an act of grace from God. And Jonah has put himself in the middle of God bestowing grace or that opportunity of grace uh, uh, through the forgiveness of sins that they might be saved or they 
they might avoid the punishment of God. And so this is a very uh, uh, precarious situation that Jonah has brought up on himself uh, because he does not want to do what the Lord has given him to do. But the first outline as we deal with Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 through 4, I want to read this from the NIV translation. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it a message, the message that I give you. Verse 3, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Verse 4, so Jonah began by doing a going a day's journey into the city proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. So let's talk about the first verse here. The Bible says here the word of the Lord came. The, uh, the Bible doesn't share with us uh, uh, how particularly this word came. Uh, but perhaps as we think about it today, uh, Jonah had a revelation. However, the Lord chose to, to reveal to him, uh, it was clear that this was the second time that Jonah had a revelation from God. And uh, specifically, it was for him. Uh, uh, God wanted him to travel to Nineveh, a great city, and he wanted Jonah to preach. So God had called this man Jonah. He had commissioned him. He had assigned him to a particular city. He had assigned a message to him. And all of this was hinged on God destroying this city or not. Right. So Jonah has a lot. He has a huge burden. He has a huge responsibility. Uh, we could go back and we could give account of how many residents it was at the uh, in Nineveh at the time of of uh, uh, Jonah's uh, commission. But if you can feel the weight of the call upon his life, and the fact that this is a corporate message here that God is saying I want you to preach to the entire city from the top down it doesn't matter who you see it doesn't matter who it is it doesn't matter what their rank uh, uh, what their status is I want you to say the same thing to everyone and so twice this is the second time but you recall Jonah originally initially did not want to do this right he ran and so uh, God uh, chased him if you will the will of God the purpose of God the plan of God sought Jonah out uh, uh, as he uh, 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 tried to flee and so it's very important that all of us appreciate the fact that uh, God has set up an analysis uh, uh, in those that he has called God has set up the people that he want you uh, that he wants you and I to engage with God will strategically place you and 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 give you an assignment give you a message that he wants you to share and we are responsible for that right so think about the blood that would have been on Jonah's hands had he not gone uh, and did what the Lord had called him to do and how was God supposed to respond to Jonah telling him flat out that he is not going to do or demonstrating to God that he's going to be uh, uh, disrespectful to God and he's going to be disobedient to the will of God but God has him now on track to travel to Nineveh so uh, but we have to remember that other lives are always at stake uh, uh, and we are responsible for sharing the message of Jesus Christ to individuals why and why should we and why do we want to see other folk not make it or not be saved right so this is the attitude that Jonah had that he really didn't care initially 
uh, what God wanted him to do. He didn't care how the call on his life would negatively impact uh, 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 the, 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 the residents of Nineveh. Uh, and so he hasn't clearly thought out the fact that he has uh, 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 gotten himself in the way of God's plans for other people to be saved. And that's a very dangerous position, particularly if you're not going to obey God. So the introductory words of Jonah, chapter 3, are almost identical to those in chapter 1, verse 2. This similarity is an indication that God had given Jonah another chance to fulfill the mission he had commissioned him to do. Jonah's assignment remained the same. Uh, he was to go to the great large city of Nineveh and proclaim uh, uh, the message that God would give him. Think about the message that, that Jonah has to share with, with the, uh, the city of Nineveh. Forty days and Nineveh will be overthrown. This is the message, right? This is the content of the message that the city would be destroyed, would be overthrown, right? in 40 days how would we feel if 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 God said you had 40 days left and you don't know him in the pardon of your sins you have not confessed Jesus Christ and this is the the type of uh, 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 mindset that we have today uh, particularly those who do not know the law we we seem to have a, a mindset that we have a lot of time and that uh, we have uh, uh, the world at our fingertips and just because of who we are and what we have and, and all of these things that God can't get to us and that so it really doesn't matter because we don't know him and, and we're not in a relationship with him so we don't have to honor uh, uh, what he says but God has the keys to our success. He has, to, he has the keys to the very breath uh, uh, that you and I draw. Uh, he has the keys uh, 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 to our sleep and our ability to come out of our slumber and sleep. He holds all the keys. Uh, uh, and so if he is saying, God is saying, you have only have 40 days left, right? This is not a good situation. And so because of the conduct of the city of Nineveh, because of their sin, it has come up in such a way to God that he is tired of it. Uh, 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 he's going to reach out to them, but he's making it conditional. They need to repent or else, right? And so Jonah has decided he is not going to do this thing. Uh, and so he gets in trouble with God. So everybody has to give an account, if you will. And so uh, uh, it's a blessing that God gave Jonah another opportunity. But God is saying to Nineveh, within 40 days, Nineveh would be completely destroyed. Right? Uh, we don't have enough information here in the, in the text of exactly what God was going to do. But you can imagine on God's scale, whatever he does, it's going to be complete and it's going to be thorough. Not because he is uh, 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 of the people so much, but because of the sin. The sin has gotten to a place, uh, uh, to a level that God is going to react. And he always will. And we need to remember that God will always uh, protect his character his countenance, he will, he will protect his name, uh, uh, he will go after individuals who are, are, are coming against uh, uh, how he wants his creation to live. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, God is saying to the entire city that it's going to be overthrown. And so, but before we uh, uh, move a little bit further into the second outline, so uh, it, the question is, in what way was Jonah's recommissioning an act of grace, right? God didn't have to give him another chance. God could have taken Jonah, since Jonah did not want to uh, uh, do what he 
called him to do. God could have called him off the face of the earth, right? And so, uh, uh, so we 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 have to thank God for another chance. We have to thank God for giving us more time. We don't deserve it, right? Uh, it doesn't matter if you are a preacher or not. We are all being extended mercy and grace. And so the fact that the very best that Jonah could do with the grace that God had given him was to obey him. And so this is a present day issue as well. But, but a sinner, uh, as I thought about this lesson, a sinner does not typically know the danger they are in as it relates to God. I want you to go very quickly to Second Peter, a very familiar passage that I'm sure you've read. Uh, Second Peter chapter 3 and I want to go down to verse 9 and I just want to read this uh, and remind you of something that Peter said about uh, uh, God's attitude about uh, uh, sin and his willingness to save. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance you know and so when we think about repenting uh, 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 God is looking for a change of heart a complete change of heart and mind uh, 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 coupled with a change of conduct and so but God is not slack you know it we shouldn't think that God can't, can't do anything about how we live and uh, because he didn't do anything yesterday doesn't mean he's you know that 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 he can do anything and 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 so we 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 begin to take God and his grace for granted and we just think that God has to continuously wake us up in the morning that we might be better sinners he doesn't have to do that right so he's never been slacked or slack uh, concerning his promises or his character or his authority his sovereignty he is not slack but Peter says he's long suffering God is tolerating uh, the behavior uh, of not just the uh, 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 the city of Nineveh, but think about us, right? God has tolerated our conduct, our attitudes, our unwillingness to hear, and He continuously sends preachers and sends messages to us, and we just we just continue. And you know, and God is so loving and merciful; He continuously wakes us up in the morning, and we go in the opposite direction. We are not paying attention to Him. We are not paying attention to the preacher. We are not paying attention to the cross. We are not paying attention to the blood of Jesus Christ to the sacrifice sacrifices and so God has said I'm going to give you another chance I'm going to wake you up again I'm going to give you another opportunity but we don't know how long we have and so it's incumbent upon us not just as we look at this lesson of uh, the story of Jonah but we think about this is the same God that we are looking in the face of today this is the same God that is dealing with us today and he does not have to give us he doesn't uh, Romans chapter 11 is clear God doesn't owe us anything right but we want to keep this in mind this twofold grace here that God is uh, 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 giving to the preacher grace for him to preach and then grace for the people to respond right our second outline is entitled wholesale repentance this is taken from Jonah chapter 3 verses 5 through 9 and again from the NIV translation the Ninevites believed God a fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth verse 6 when Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh he rose from his throne took off his royal robes covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, 
Do not let people or animals, herds or flocks taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Verse 9. Who knows? God may re- may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. This is the king talking here. The king of Nineveh. The people believe. Remember the you remember the scripture I gave you in Romans chapter 10. Uh, Jonah shares what the Lord gives him, the message. And then the people believe, right? And then they start fasting, right? And a fast was proclaimed on all of them, from the greatest to the least. Put on a sackcloth. What is a sackcloth? It's a sign of mourning or anguishing. So the condition was dire for the uh, uh, for the city of Nineveh, and the king knew it. This warning, right? It reached the king, and he he got up from his throne and he took off his royal robes. If God comes through that city and destroys it, who he is and what he wears, it won't matter anymore, right? So he discards his robes, his royal robes. And he, the king, he puts on this sackcloth indicating to God that we are in a state of mourning and we are in a state of anguishing. We don't want this thing to happen. This is in, they, are, they have internalized the word of God and they are now sitting in the dust. This is symbolic of where they came from, right? And if God comes through, that's where they will return. And so the king issued a proclamation. He has the authority to decree that nobody will eat, no flocks, no herds, uh, no one will eat anything. Don't let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Everybody's in trouble, right? The animals are in trouble. Let everyone call urgently on God. Back to Romans chapter 10, as I shared with you earlier. So these people have heard the message. They have believed, right? They are fasting, right? And they are also calling. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let me say this to you. If you are unsaved, it's urgent that you call on the name of the Lord. If you are listening to this message today, it's it's urgent, right? If if you don't know the Lord and the part of your sins, it's urgent that you make a 911 call to God and offer him your life that he might save it. These individuals know that their life hangs in the balance. Jonah has told them they have 40 days left and then God's going to come through so this is the time right the time that God is giving us is priceless and so the king uses it wisely and he also uses his authority right so it it's it's urgent you know this is a the the, the gospel message and I, I don't know if we appreciate it like this but it's time sensitive. It's always been time sensitive. It always will be time sensitive. So just because you you don't want to hear it doesn't mean you get to hear it again. Right? If God has preached to you once, twice, three times, he doesn't owe you a fourth or a fifth or a sixth time. Right? So Hebrews is clear. It said, The day you hear my voice, saith the Lord, hard not, hard not your heart. And so the king is using his authority to let everyone know that you are responsible. He said, Let everyone call urgently on God. Right? So he had to know something. 
right, to use and to say what he is saying. He said, and let them give up their evil ways and their violence. He could have done that before the message came. But it's something about God when he speaks. And it's something about God's word that convicts us. And that's what has happened here on a mass scale. And so, verse 9, the king says, who knows? Right? I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know. Maybe God will, won't do what he said. Maybe he'll, he won't punish us. Maybe he'll turn from his fierce anger so we don't perish. Right? Why will you die apart from Jesus Christ? Why will you not accept salvation? Why will you not accept the message of God? Right? And so the king doesn't know how this thing is going to work out. But he doesn't want to perish. And none of us should want to perish and none of us should want to see others perish because of our unwillingness to be a light and to be a beacon of hope for them, right? One thing I learned about uh, uh, my life as a sinner, and, and, and I, I learned this over the years before Christ came into my life, the hopelessness that I carried, right? And so many times we don't understand the undercurrents in a sinner's life, in a sinner's life, that they are living life, they're doing their best to enjoy the substance that they have, but their outlook is hopeless, right? So if you think about the Ninevites here, they don't know what the future holds for them. But they want to, to make an attempt to believe, to call on the Lord, to fast. We're not going to eat anything. We're not going to drink anything. And we're going to see if God will turn away from what he's about to do. Right? I want you to look at the first epistle of John chapter 2. We won't have time to get to it today. The first epistle of John chapter 2 verses 15 through 17. One last point I'll make before we move on to the ad, uh, to the last outline. We need a strategy, right? Of how we're going to escape this sinful world. We need a strategy, right? This outline here from uh, 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 Jonah chapter uh, 3 verses 5 through 9 if you think about what the king is doing here the king has a strategy how to get out of his sins he has a strategy for the people that he governs of how to get out of this sinful situation so we need a plan if we're going to live in this world and in this life that God provides we need a strategy of how we're going to live in this world and not be of this world. What's your plan? What is your goal? How do you plan to live in this world without being a sinner? I would submit the cross of Jesus Christ to you today. I would submit the blood of Jesus to you today. I would submit the brokenness of the body of Jesus to you today. If you're going to live a victorious life in this world apart from sin, you're going to need a preacher. You're going to need a message. You're going to need faith. And you're going to need a Savior. Right? And you certainly will need the power of the Holy Ghost. So this is the strategy. Right? But the king says everyone should call urgently. Right? Don't waste any time. You don't have much time. Call on the, on the Lord God and see if we can get him to change his mind, if we change the way we are living. A sackcloth, I'll make one last point, 
if we're going to put this cloth on, it must be understood God looks for expressions of inner humility right, and brokenness before him rather than devotion to rituals. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 6 verses 16 through 18. If you're going to put this sackcloth on, you should understand that God is looking for something to be happening with you on the inside. Right? I also want to give you Acts chapter 17 verses 29 through 31 and then James chapter 4 verses 7 through 10. Our last outline wholesale forgiveness is taken from Jonah chapter 3 verse 10. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Because the people repented they had a feeling of regret a changing of the mind or a turning from sin to God then God said I won't destroy the city right God relented God changed what he was about to do because the people changed right God said I'll let you live right if you're willing to do and to obey and to live under the under the laws that I provide and I can do that because I'm God right God can do that because he's sovereign God can do that because he breathed into man's nostrils and he became a living soul God can do that because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. God can do that because he calls the sun uh, uh, to shine upon us. He calls for the rain and it pours down on the earth. Because he is God, he is the life giver. He is the life sustainer, right? He is the life provider, right? James put it this way in the first chapter. He said, every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of light. Not some of it, but all, right? Every good and perfect gift. So God has the authority. You don't give God authority. He has it, right? He commands the morning and it comes, right? God calls for us out of our sleep and we wake up, right? So we need to remember these things and we need to humble ourselves, right? Under the mighty hand of God. He is God and beside him there is none other. It doesn't matter what you think. This is the reality of things, right? And so God was looking for changes in the people, right? But this wholesale forgiveness points us to an existing uh, on a large scale without discrimination. In other words, God will accept all of our forgiveness. He can hear all of our prayers at the same time and not mix anyone up. This wholesale forgiveness is on a massive scale. In other words, everybody needed to do it. The same thing with the wholesale repentance. It was, it was done on a scale as per even the king. He said, everybody going to do this. Right? This is the scale by which God was allowing and, and, and calling on these. God wanted the entire city to repent. Every household. Everybody. Because everybody's in the same position. I'm going to destroy the city and, it, and all of its content. Right? So we're all in the same boat. Right? Same thing applies today. We all need God's forgiveness. We all need to be urgently. Right? Don't waste any time. While the blood is running warm in your veins, you need to call on the name of the Lord. If you're not saved today, and we're going to pray in just a minute. 
for God's mercy. Right? We want it to continue. We want His grace to continue. But we don't want to change. Right? And that will not sustain. That will not sustain us going forward. Right? We ought to know these things by now. So, it's clear while the details of the message are unknown, one thing is clear that God's decision to send Jonah to Nineveh was an act of mercy. God told Jonah what to say, knowing that his message would convict and move the people to repentance. God's response to their repentance in response to Jonah's preaching was to relent from this threat of destruction. Right? I want to share this with you. Every time that you and I have heard a message, think about this. Every time that you heard a message, whether you were sitting in the sanctuary, online, in the car, wherever you heard a message from the from the word of God I want you to think about that was an act of grace because you didn't have to hear it right but you heard it and you heard it some of us have been following the messages of Jesus Christ for years look at all the grace that we've had down through the years and the Lord is still raising up preachers they, when, when the preacher is gone then we really got problems but God continuously sends and continues to send preachers because there is a need for people to be saved. It would be pointless for God to send a messenger if nobody needed to be saved. That doesn't make sense. But God continues to send them so that everyone will be afforded an opportunity. They used to sing a song years ago. If if you if you lose or if if you're lost, it's nobody's fault but yours. Right? We don't have time to strive with God. We need to give our lives to Him. Right? Post haste that we might enjoy the grace and the mercies of God through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this lesson today. I am convicted, and I'm sure there are many others that are convicted today by your word today. It has impacted us because we all understand what it means to be warned. We understand what it means when an indictment has been rendered. We understand that we don't have time. It never belonged to us, but you are time. All of the, our days belong to you. You have blessed us with more than we deserve. Grace upon grace and mercy upon mercy. But we ask your forgiveness now of our sins. Father, we pray that whatever you have given and charge at our hands to do that we would get about our father's business that we would do these things today that we would do it right now in the name of Jesus father we lift up all of the families today wherever the unsaved might be we call on you in the name of Jesus to save to the uttermost from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet father we pray for those who have not yet made a decision to give their lives to you who are straddled the fence and not understanding that they don't have the opportunity to place time on tomorrow because it doesn't belong to any of us. We thank you for the cross of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the sacrifice that he made that we might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Father, we pray that, that whatever we have said today would be to your praise, your glory, and your honor. We ask you now in the name of Jesus to save, save those in the White House and any other house that your people might be in today. Look on our governments today in the name of Jesus. Save these men and women's hearts and minds that they might be able to, to, to meet out just laws and, and equitable 
uh, positions for people that they might be able to see your handiwork even through legislation even through their lives in the name of Jesus thank you for your loving kindness that you have bestowed upon us and your faithfulness from generation to generation in Jesus name we pray amen so again until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again we say God bless you <music>